I don't know who I am. I don't know where I'm going. None of it. What? Like amnesia? Yes. When it comes to identity, few movie fans the world over don't know who Matt Damon is. <laughs> Jason Bourne has made him a megastar. I have the best shot at a normal life here. Guy's guy, father to four, he lives in New York now, where anonymity is an even better fit than amnesia. Can you basically be not invisible, but at least incognito yeah, in this Yeah, completely, yeah. yeah. I'm rarely outside without a, a hat or a, you know, and, and it's great, and, and people, uh, you know, particularly in the neighborhood I live in, you know, are, I think they're very used to me and my family, and they kind of absorbed us into the community there. I don't want my kids to see a kind of weird reaction to fame. Brad and Angie, I mean, they, I mean, they can't walk around in New York without just having it be an international incident and having, you know, photographers everywhere and traffic being stopped. And um, so, so I feel lucky that I'm that I'm able to have a a relatively normal life and still be able to do the kind of work that I want to do. It's Tom, Tom Ripley. Tom Ripley? A celebrity who is less self-interested than interesting, he has said he thinks of himself more as a character actor than a leading man. James Francis, Ryan? Yes, sir. How'd you guess that? There are people who are so watchable that you just can't take your eyes off them when they're on screen. And, uh, and I feel like uh, that, that's not me. And, but if I have a good character to play, um, then that then that takes care of everything. Hi, Dad. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, something big came up at work. I'm not going to be home for supper. Damon is a star who doesn't need the world to revolve around him. It's part of the reason A-list directors Martin Scorsese, Francis Ford Coppola, Steven Soderbergh, and Clint Eastwood want him in their films. If you had to write a short list of the best people who've directed movies in the last 20 years in, this, in, in America. You've worked with just about everybody. A lot of them, yeah, a lot of them. I, it's, it's, well, it's one of the ways that I, it's really the main way that I choose my, what job I'm gonna take is I, I really look at the director. And so I've always viewed it as that, you know, that's the horse you're betting on. Your big bet, your only bet, is really at the very beginning of the process when you say yes. And once you say yes, everything you do is in service of that director. Action! It would only be a matter of time till the Coen brothers came calling. Cut. Cut. The film, a remake of the John Wayne classic, True Grit. You're no bigger than a corn nubbin. What are you doing with all this pistol? Did you see the original? Did you see John Wayne? I'm the one guy in America who did not. When I found out about this one, I asked the Coen brothers who were directing it if I should go see the original, and they said, actually, the book is where you should go, because we're not looking at it as a remake of, of that film as much as a strict adaptation of this great book. Are you some kind of law? That's right. I'm a Texas Ranger. In the movie, Damon stars opposite 13-year-old newcomer Haley Steinfeld, who with no prior big screen experience was picked from a pool of 15,000 for the role. Well, he's in the territory and I hold out little hope for you winning your bounty. Why is that? She's astonishing. This character is nothing like Haley Steinfeld actually is in real life. Why have you been ineffectually pursuing Janie? For somebody her age, you know, this isn't anywhere near the way she talks off screen. And so to be able to connect to the character is not something that you expect a 13-year-old to be able to do. Damon himself was just a few years older than Steinfeld when he got his first Hollywood role. The year was 1988. He was 18. The movie, Mystic Pizza. Mom, do you want my green stuff? <laughs> That's called the tamale, steamer. It's the best part. Since then, Damon, now 40, has starred in almost 50 films. Hard to believe there was a time when Damon's name didn't necessarily conjure images of box office dynamite. Wasn't there a point in your career where your phone basically stopped ringing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When was, was that? It was after I'd shot the Bourne movie, but it hadn't come out. All the pretty horses had come out, and it hadn't done well. And I had done this Bourne Identity film, which had all the signals that it was going to be a turkey. 
I'd never done a movie like that. So people said, well, that figures. It's the talented Mr. Ripley's trying to be a spy. Like, this, this isn't going to work. <laughs> when the movie came out, the next Monday, I had, you know, 20 or 30 offers. Long before Jason Bourne, there was a very different character, math genius Will Hunting. Yeah, they're going to hook you up with a job or what? Yeah. Sit in a room and do long division for the next 50 years. Goodwill Hunting, the 1997 film that Damon co-wrote with his close friend and fellow unknown Ben Affleck, launched both their careers, with nine Academy Award nominations and an Oscar for Best Screenplay. Legendary producer Harvey Weinstein played a key role in making the movie. Hey, hold up, Jack. Slow it down. What do we got? Damon was grateful, but not afraid to fight for what he believed in. That movie was everything to us. We wanted to get the right director, and Harvey had gone to a director that we that he hadn't checked with us, and so we went in to talk to him about it and just say, hey, you know, there's a, there's a process here that we agreed on. And he said, well, you're a nobody. Yeah, that's true. And what did you say back to him? I'm a nobody with director approval. <laughs> <laughs> Playing hardball with Harvey Weinstein was not Damon's first big gamble. Even bigger was his decision to drop out of Harvard to pursue a film career. Did you always know, did you always know you would do this? Yeah, yeah, I always, I always wanted to. From the time uh, I, was, I was pretty young. I mean, I started really seriously doing it in high school. And, uh, you know, I had great parents who really encouraged me to, not to do it professionally necessarily, but to, but to do what I enjoyed and, and were very supportive. Damon grew up near Harvard on the streets of Cambridge, where he got his taste for activism. He now travels to places like Africa for his organization, Water.org, which brings clean water to poor villages. The next vice president of the United States. He's also outspoken about politics and caused a stir in 2008 when he likened Sarah Palin's vice presidential run to a bad Disney movie. I was alarmed at the time. I, re I remember we were getting very close to the election and she still hadn't submitted to an interview. And... Uh, I thought that was really dangerous and reckless of, uh, of, of them to put her in that so close to the presidency uh, without anybody knowing who the heck she was. And, uh, and, that, and so that was, that was why I said something. Politics may be no laughing matter for Damon, but he does have plenty of reasons to be smiling, including two blockbuster franchises the Ocean's Eleven series, and of course, the Bourne trilogy. Matt Damon is living the life he dreamed of. Making movies is the greatest job. I spent my teenage years and you know, my formative years kind of hoping that one day I could be in a place where I could make movies. I thought you were going to say the sun was in your eyes. That is to say, your eye. It doesn't get any better than that.